Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, and delighted that you're able to join us yet again for another podcast. Now, before we do get into today's top four trending stories, don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube and do subscribe. And also hit that notification bell on YouTube will let you know when the next podcast is updated on the platform. Now, if you like listening to us on podcast players, there's a link down below in the description was to take you to all the available podcast players that the show is hosted on and finally if you like the show if you want to support the show you can do so by looking down in the description and buying us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com so now that's all done and dusted let's jump into the top stories doing the rounds here in thailand today and the first one is in relation to air pollution and it's going to be worse this season That's according to a number of departments within the government. The Pollution Control Department has warned that ultra-fine dust levels will be worse this harvest season than last year because of drier weather and will peak in February, so bear that in mind if you're coming to Thailand. Pansak Tiramat Kahl, Air and Noise Quality Director at the department, said on Tuesday that stagnant air resulted in the accumulation of ultra-fine dust, currently produced mainly by motor vehicles. Dust pollution this year may be worse than last year because of drier weather. The dust will gradually increase, become higher in January and peak in February, he noted. Air pollution would continue afterwards due to smog from the north, he said. On Tuesday morning, the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration reported unhealthy levels of particle matter, 2.5 micrometers and less in diameter, parts of Bang Bon, Bang Kum Tian and Bang Plat. The levels of PM 2.5 per cubic meter of air over the past 24 hours range from 38.2 to 54.4 micrograms. The highest levels were recorded in non-chem. The safe threshold is 37.5 according to the government. The industry ministry recently also blamed ultrafine dust on on sugarcane burn off saying it affected about 44 million people for about six months every year. So it does look like we're going to be having more quality of air problems again this year and heading into next year thailand there seems to be no plan yet again from this government so the previous government we had the problems and last year was horrendous in you know parts of bangkok and surrounding areas and then into the north of thailand we then have a no new government now and they have seemed to have no plan as of yet on how to tackle this I mean, it's not a surprise that it's going to come along again. So you would think at some stage they would start to put plans together to try to solve this issue. I mean, I think that's what people want to see, at least an effort being made. But just to talk about it without doing anything means absolutely nothing to people. Actually, what it does do is it warns tourists, especially coming to this country, the areas of the country to stay away from. And then at the end of the day, that is going to affect the economic outcome for locals within these areas. So, you know, we know that Chiang Mai is going to be a disaster zone come January, February, March this year. And businesses will suffer greatly. And at what point will the government ever get off their asses to do something about it? I do remember that the Move Forward Party after the election, in which they won, by the way, but didn't form the government because they were basically stabbed in the back by the Pua Thai Party, had plans to deal with this and legitimate plans. But of course, we know the Pua Thai Party, the only thing they care about is taxing Shinawatra and getting them back into the country. They seem to be doing nothing to help the people other than talking about 10,000 baht. And once that's done, by the way, you'll hear about nothing again for another three years. So it is concerns people living in Thailand that there is no effort being made to control this. And at the end of the day, forget even about tourists. Let's talk about just local people's health. That isn't even being addressed. It's nearly a We couldn't give a shit about you. And we know the problem's going to persist. We know people are going to become unhealthy or going to get sick from it, but we're not going to do anything about it. And that seems to be the kind of the blasé way the government, this new government as well, are acting. I hope I'm proven wrong by them. I really do. But, you know, the past sometimes shapes how we think in the future as well. Now, moving along, petrol prices cut next week. The cabinet on Tuesday approved in principle a 2.5 baht per litre reduction in the pump price of Gasahal 91 for three months, probably from October 31st, the energy ministry said. 
Pierrepon Salapaka said the price cut would come from a reduction in excise tax of 2.5 baht per litre. This was similar to the means used to reduce the diesel pump prices. The Energy Ministry proposed a reduction to the Cabinet on Tuesday on the Prime Minister's instructions. The Ministry would present full details to the Cabinet next week and the reduction in the Gasahal 91 price should then take immediate effect. Gasol 91 was 37.98 baht per litre at PTT and Banchak petrol stations in Greater Bangkok on Tuesday. The price cut through a reduction in excise duty would reduce state revenue by about 1 billion baht, the Energy Ministry said. Mr. Pirapan, also a deputy minister, said the Energy Ministry would find ways to also reduce the pump prices of other kinds of petrol. It would also revive the overall oil price structure. The restructuring would be the biggest of its kind in the last decade, he noted. So in general, though, petrol prices, diesel prices here in Thailand are, are, are very good, are cheap compared to Europe and whatnot. I mean, think diesel at the moment, it's meant to be less than 30 baht, but I guess with the VAT added on, it brings it just over 30 baht. So maybe 30.08 or something like that. That's what I recently paid when I was at a, a petrol station filling up. I, I think in general, prices are quite good here. I do remember during COVID, at the beginning of COVID, diesel was at about 15 baht a litre. But of course, not much good to you back then because you couldn't drive anywhere. That's the cheapest I've ever seen it. But nevertheless, what do you think of the petrol and diesel prices here in the country? Do you find them quite cheap? I mean, for me, compared to where I, where I come back from Ireland last month, um, yeah, I find them very, very cheap. But I'd love to know your opinion, as always, down below in the comment section now. Our good friend Taksin Shinawatra, he was under the knife on Monday, by the way. Under the knife. By the way, the headline is Jailed Taksin Goes Under the Knife on Monday. What I find interesting about the headline is the jailed part. I mean, he hasn't seen a prison cell as of yet, but nevertheless, jailed former Thai Prime Minister Taksin Shinawatra underwent orthopedic surgery on Monday and is recovering in an intensive care unit at the police hospital in Bangkok. Taksin underwent five hours of surgery starting at 9am, said the Deputy Permanent Secretary for Justice. He assigned Bangkok Remand Prison Chief Nasati Tong Plad to inspect the proceedings and ensure continuing care for Taksin. His doctors decided to perform the urgent procedure after reviewing results of a CT and MRI scans conducted last week, Chakatarn said. Taksin, 74, returned to Thailand in August, ending his self-imposed exile, you mean fleeing justice, and was immediately taken to Bangkok Remand Prison on corruption convictions. He was, however, transferred to the police general hospital a few hours after being incarcerated. One of his daughters claims that he had another operation last month, but to declines to give any form of details. So Taxon now is, of course, in the Bangkok Police Hospital. He spent a couple of hours, as they say, in the police cell. He didn't last very long there. And since then, he has been shacked up on in a private ward a private room in the police general hospital. Now, currently we have 149 inmates who are receiving medical care in hospitals. 148 are in normal wards under watch from the police, some handcuffed, etc., etc. And only one out of that 149 have their own private, private ward on a private floor in the police general hospital. And that, of course, is Texan Shinawatra. Hasn't done any time, really. I mean, if any people are believing that he has actually anything wrong with him, it's Gaga land time. At the end of the day, any man who is as sick as he suddenly become would never have left the comfort of Dubai, the comfort of the state-of-the-art medical hospitals and technology that he would have had access to there in Dubai to come to Thailand to be shacked up at the police hospital. Absolutely no way whatsoever. I did see a po uh, picture of him a couple of weeks ago on a, a gurney being wheeled to the hospital. Interesting, he's able to keep his hair dyed though. Nice jet black, I mean, because he is grey. So he's be able to keep his hair dyed while he's in hospital. I mean, it's amazing stuff. And it's amazing that he's getting away with this. Of course, we know why he's getting away with it for reasons that we can't discuss on this channel without, you know, possibly getting arrested. Um, but nevertheless, it is absolutely a disgrace. And the fact that they just hide behind this, oh, we can't say anything because of privacy laws. This is about the only time privacy laws have ever been used in Thailand. And it really is disgraceful.
He's eligible for parole, by the way, in February. So I reckon he'll spend a couple more months in the prison and then suddenly February, March, he'll be he'll he'll be he'll be okay again. All his problems will have left and he'll get parole and he'll be out and you know, he'll be out causing mischief and doing Thailand over as he has been for many years and making sure that him and his family have profited very, very well. There was years gone by that I thought he would have been persecuted, that he was a persecuted figure here in Thailand, the coups and everything else. But the more you read about him, the more you see this kind of behavior, the more you start to realize that he's not a great guy. And I think there's a lot of them out there just like him. They are prepared to take and take and take from Thailand. They play upon the Thai people's feelings of, you know, oh, Thaksin Shinawat, he's been so good to the country. He really hasn't been. He's pillaged the country. He's ensured that his family have become very prosperous off the back of the Thai people. And that's what he's done. And he's gotten away with it for many years. Um, And it's a shame that Thailand isn't able to get out of this cycle that it seems to have had itself in for many, many years. But anyway, that's just a little opinion of mine. I'd love to know what you think about it down below in the comment section. And finally, Phuket Soar Poor Core Land for Tourism Under Review. The Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives, Tamanat Prompao, that's the gentleman who's the convicted drug dealer, did four years in prison, by the way, in Australia. He's now a minister in the country, was in Phuket a few days ago to review plans to allow farmers to develop Sorpor Core land into areas that generated income from tourism. So-called Sorpor Core land became available through Agriculture and Land Reform Office after the agency was formed under the Land Reform Act of 1975. ALRO is better known by its Thai initials Sorpor Core. The land reform project was intended to provide poor farmers with what was deemed to be degraded forest areas so that they could eke out a living growing crops on state land. So that actually sounds like a good plan. Phuket province has an area in the reform zone, Mr. Tamanat said, at an event held at the Bang Miao Dum Reservoir in Phuket. In total, 32,372 rye of land in Phuket under the administration of Alro exists, and that's according to Mr. Tamanat. Of the 13,184 may be allocated to farmers, so far 9,701 rye of that land has been already allocated to farmers as 687 plots assigned to 583 cases in 10 Tambon districts. The problem with the land in the reform zone areas is that overall it's hilly, making it unsuitable for farming, he said. However, he added, much of the land had sea views and is suitable for use for tourist service businesses that can generate very high incomes. This can create a good living situation for farmers, he added. There is a need to use land to serve tourists and various businesses such as hotels, resorts, accommodations, shops, restaurants, Mr. Tamanat said. The solution is to allocate community land according to the announcement of the Agricultural Land Reform Office regarding allocation of community land in agricultural reform areas announced on October 30th, 2020. Mr. Tamanat yesterday reviewed maps of areas in Phuket with Sorpor Core land that may be developed. Local officials guided him with explanations of the areas that he was reviewing and local farmers present made their pleas to develop land for tourism purposes and explained key issues they were facing. Now Mr. Tamanat noted one key issue, land prices are very high and causing rights disputes and landowners, he said. The revision of the Sorpor Core land use in 2020 caused much concern in Phuket. Under the original nine rights laid out in the Reform Act, farmers allocated Sorpor Core land were issued a Sorpor Core land use document and were allowed to use the land for agricultural purposes only. The land use rights were allowed to be passed on from family member to family member, but the land could never be sold legally as it was to forever remain owned by the government. However, through the announcement in 2020, ALRO revised the uses that farmers are allowed to develop their Sopor Core land. The new regulations allow 12 uses, farming, petrol station, drinking water plant, marketplace, vehicle dealership, retail shop, post office, healthcare facility, restaurant, school apartment complex and food processing plant. The move raised serious concerns among even property developers amid fears of the impact of massive deforestation of the hills of Phuket, which would have a drastic impact on Phuket's tourism in industry, the very industry that the farmers would be looking to cash in on. Of note, large tracts of land in the hills both north and south of Patong are Sopor Core land. So you can imagine where this article continues to go on about. 
basically what they're saying is that there's land that was allocated to farmers it was free land given to them to use and in 2020 the Sopo Corps titles were allowed to have other uses other than agriculture but of course now in Phuket they're saying well we can't use it for this so we want to use it for tourism purposes and to me 32,000 rye is a lot of rye a lot of land acreage let's say there's going to become a point where Phuket has no green areas left has nothing left in it the problem that Phuket has is that there is nobody overseeing the construction and the development of the island and there is no sustainable plan for Phuket as an island so what you're basically getting is people building wherever the hell they want whenever they want and they build whatever they want and there is real no oversight over what's being built there is no looking at is there enough water to supply all these buildings that will have lots of tourists in them let's say for example you want to build a lot of new hotels on this land is there enough water that can supply all these people the answer to that question by the way is no because come high season and the island gets full they start to have droughts the 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 dams around phuket get empty it's legitimate things that happen here they start having to ship water in from Panya province now it hasn't happened in the last couple of years and that's mainly because of covid and that's mainly because there was no tourists on the island but this year is going to be the first year where i think you're going to have a full island the electricity network is not able to cope with what it has now it, there is regularly in phuket regularly power cuts all the time and that's simply because the system is not able to handle what it has to feed sewerage absolutely horrendous most places have to install their own private sewerage systems there's no real government system as such and where does it all go who takes care of it all and this is why you have instances of you know black gunge appearing on phuket beaches and black water pouring out and this is why you you have water drought during the high season because people are not looking at what to do and how to develop the island now if you have land that's meant to be for agricultural purposes is it right to let people cash in on it and lose this 32,000 acres to hotels and other kinds i mean the only thing they seem to think about is the minute they think in the hills sea view oh bob's your uncle hotels that's all they think about but they don't think about the damage to the actual island itself the damage to the environment and what's going on around it and it's all greed it's all money it's all who can line our pockets as quickly as possible and be under no illusion if a farmer owns this bit of land right the sore core land you can be under no illusion that he's gonna have somebody come up to him saying oh we'll build that hotel here's a little money for you we'll rent it off you now and it'll be It'll be the big guy as usual who'll be controlling the land for the next hundred years because he'll have his hotel built on it or he'll have some tourist attraction built on it. And at some point, people have to take responsibility for the development of the island and the sustainability of the island. But it is not certainly happening now. And if they keep going to where they're going, it eventually will be too late and there won't be any saving of Phuket or other tourist parts of the country. But for me... Phuket is one of the worst right now. Traffic that stems straight up the archery of the Tepcasetri Road, which goes up and down. I mean, try try go through on a, a Saturday, Friday, Thursday night, anytime be five and eight through the place. It's a disaster zone. There's no feeling that Phuket is an island anymore. You know, it's a feeling of a place that's packed with buses, cars and motor scooters. Still, after all this time, 2023, no proper public transportation system. None in the pipeline either, because it looks like the the train that they discussed or whatever to the airport, that's not going to happen or it's been, you know, thrown down the line again as such, you know, another 20 years. So there's no development. There's no future thinking for this island. To me, it's a great shame because... I think Phuket has a lot to offer, but it needs a steadying hand. It needs oversight on what's going on in it, and it's just not getting it now. But I'd love to know your opinion about all of this and any of the topics we've covered on the shows. And that is it for today, folks. As always, delighted you're able to tune in. Sorry about the little bit of rant at the end, but, you know, I live in Phuket, and I think it's an island that is being slowly decimated and completely taken advantage of by pretty much everybody but nevertheless we'll talk to you in the next couple of days hope you enjoyed the show take care and do stay safe 
But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.